Right, let's just see if I can get this working properly this time. Now how the hell I managed to flip the camera then? Very bizarre. Just get my iPad on as well. Dear Lord, seriously. There we go. <laughs> right, I'm going to try and zoom in again without flipping the camera. I have no idea what the hell I did there. Let's zoom gently. That's better. Hello again, guys. Sorry about that. Completely flipped the camera around the wrong way. <laughs> check the comments coming through yes they are hello again right we're back to it just do a very very gentle zoom again dear lord so as i was saying i'm going to be doing some work in derwent ink tents and also some castle arts over the top yes we are back alexandra i'm very very sorry guys i zoomed and did something very very strange to the camera but yes we are back so what I'm going to do is show you how I've laid down the reds and then I'll activate this one and come back to this one up here. But probably only going to be with you for about an hour and a bit depending on how the uh, internet waves go. If the start is anything to go by, it may or may not go well, we'll see. So let's just jump straight in. So Derwent Ink Tents in Shiraz. So when you're laying down your Ink Tents pencils, I always start from darkest and then go through to my lightest ones. All right, let's just have a look at the comments. Alexandra was confused. Yeah, I was confused and worried for a second as well. A bit tense, <laughs> a little bit tense there. But yeah, we're back. So the Shiraz is gonna be the color that I'm using for the sort of shadowy areas in between here. Now you don't have to press very hard with these. You get an awful lot of pigment off them. So a little of this goes an awfully long way. The more you press, the more of the colour you will get on the page. So this is just the same as blending out really with any kind of pencils. Where you're adding another layer in with a different colour, you just ease off on the pressure. And that's where your blend line comes in. Oh, you enjoyed the chat with Emily? Yeah, it was good fun. Really, really good fun. Um, it was nice to see her face to face. So I now have a face to go with the voice, which was lovely. And um, we had several outtakes where the pair of us were sort of speaking like we'd got someone else's teeth in, which was really funny, which she obviously edited out. But um, we had quite a laugh. We were talking for about an hour and a half. It was lovely. Really, really lovely. So I'll hopefully have a, an actual live stream with Emily coming up in the next few weeks once we can get something scheduled in. So that's something to look out for. Yeah, quite fun. I have listened to it back, much as I don't like hearing myself, I have listened to it back. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Apart from the fact that at the very beginning of the video I said I don't feel too shabby for a Wednesday. We actually did it on Thursday, so I clearly didn't know the day of the week. Patty, wonderful. First live, welcome. We've had a major technical hitch in the first 30 seconds, so I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit better. We'll see. Right, chilli red now. So that's my darkest colour going on. My next lightest from that would be this chilli red. So for those of you just joining, we're into Derwent Ink Tents today. Hi Dominique. Long time no see guys. Hi Gail. So these ones, as you can see from this one that I've already finished, we've got the darker shades coming through on this one, so I'm going to be layering them um, slightly differently depending on which petals we're doing. I'm going to do my best to try and colour quickly so that I can actually show you how I've finished them off. Dominique enjoyed the chat with Emily as well, yeah it was good fun, really really good fun. We were chatting for ages, ages and ages and ages, it was really really nice. But yeah, I didn't even get my day right though. Can you use the same technique with watercolour pencils? Um, yes and no. Watercolour pencils will carry on activating when you wet them. Whereas these pencils are made from Indian ink and when they dry they're permanent. So you can put more layers on the top and you won't interrupt the layers underneath. So watercolour you would have a slightly different effect with, but if you're going to use pencils over the top, like I have been doing with these anyway, um, you can sort of correct any areas where you're not happy with the pigment and things. Alexandra's got coffee brewing. 
that Catherine's going to go and make us one at about five, I think. So I'm just over blending into the, the darker colour, the Shiraz, a little bit. Again, you don't have to press super hard with these, really. A little of these goes an awfully long way. Glad to see you back. Thanks, Michelle. I have still been colouring in the background, I just haven't been going live and things. I needed a bit of a break. And you missed the first five minutes where I completely flipped the camera wrong. So yeah, it's been it's been pretty, pretty typical me really. Now then, I think I'm gonna stick with this chili red one and I'm just gonna put this is my sort of darkest colour red on the top here. Hi Apami. So I'm going to be doing sort of dark from the middle radiating out to lightest. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that at the centre line there. And then I'll activate the one underneath where I've already put the colours down. So I'm going to be dotting about a bit on this centre piece. Just so I can show you the different stages. Because it does stay wet for a few minutes so you do need to make sure when you're adding ordinary pencils over the top that it's nice and dry before you do or it ends up looking a bit like a swamp which is not the look we're going for we're going for cute Christmas flowers but yeah good to be back very good to be back but yeah I know a lot of you have listened to that um, interview with Emily it was um I did listen back, listen to it myself, and then um, Catherine wanted to hear it as well, so we listened to it a second time yesterday, it was quite good. So Hot Red is our next one, so again we're going from darkest reds through to lightest reds. I'm going to just use a little bit of this on the end of these these ones. I'm going to go all around the outside ones I think first. You know how I get distracted when I'm reading comments and trying to hold a conversation. Sometimes it doesn't end well. What is the colour going on the centres? So we've had Shiraz, we've also had Chili Red and this is Hot Red now. The centres in the middle if that's what you're meaning. I haven't decided yet, I don't know. I might do a bit of, um, I may leave those white or I may do them gold. don't know, we'll see how it looks. A bit undecided. This is one of those pages where I've got sort of an idea of um, how I want it to look, but it's going to be one of those ones that comes together in little bits and pieces. I haven't got a ma sort of a master plan for the page as yet. I just knew that I wanted to do more of these flowers. So, yeah. But I hope you guys are all keeping well and you're all getting ready for Christmas. Um, hope you've all got some time off from work as well to spend with family. I finish work on the 23rd and that's me off all the way through until the new year. So I'm counting down. I've got, what, nine working days left. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to that break. There'll be lots and lots of colouring happening while I'm off. There we go. So we'll go to the lightest ones. The lightest colour today is Scarlet Pink. So again, those of you that have just joined in, we're using Derwent Ink Tents. So Scarlet Pink is going on last. So I'm going to put that right around the edge of these sort of inner petals. And then I'm going to activate this one underneath. I may then do the leaves on this one. I hope you have to kind of move around in areas with these because they do take a few minutes to dry. Oh God, Dominique's on the chocolate, oh dear. I hope that's not my, my drivel that's pushed you to that, Dominique. Alexandra's been Christmas shopping, brilliant. And we've just been placed into um, a bunch of different restrictions with COVID in England. So luckily most of our Christmas shopping, apart from the odd bit of food shopping, is now done. Which means that we're not going out and about maybe as much as we would do normally at the moment. Just trying to... Uh, bide our time a little bit see how things are going we've both got our booster vaccinations coming up next week slightly nervous about that I'm not gonna lie um, but it's better to be uh, better to be safe than sorry isn't it there we go so it roughly looks the same as that one 
So those of you that have been on my streams before know that these are the water brushes I favour, these Caran d'Ache ones, because you can control the flow of water. Really, really like this one. Nine times out of ten I use the blue end, um, which is, I believe, the medium size. As this one hasn't been used for a couple of hours, so I'm just going to wake him up again. Hiya, Carol. Ah, Julie, you're the only person that I've spoken to who's had the booster and has not been really quite unwell with it, and that's why I'm worried. So that's really interesting to read. Rosalind, you've just had yours as well. I do hope that you uh, don't suffer with it and that you, you're okay. Right, so with these, um, we activate from our lightest colour into the darkest colour, being sort of mindful of any shadows and things. So I have just a piece of uh, kitchen towel here just to wipe my brush. So I'm going to go ahead and activate these. So a few of you have been okay, just sore arms. Annie, you were okay with yours, were you? Liana, not so much. Samantha's okay, Jill, poorly. Oh, heck. Yeah, I had the um, AstraZeneca one. Um, I think, yeah, my first shot was um, just around Easter. And um, luckily it was Good Friday. If it hadn't have been, I would absolutely have been calling in sick. Um, it was horrific. Shot two was June. Um, felt a bit ropey, but I was functioning. So um, we'll see how we are with shot three. Catherine's got hers on Wednesday. I've got mine on Saturday. So I'm not going to put a live up um, for next week on Sunday, just purely because I don't know how I'm going to be. Um, I don't want to put something up and then have to kind of let you guys down at the last minute. So you may have to bear with me a bit next week. Just keep an eye because I may put something up last minute when I know if I'm okay. Carol wants to learn to how an ink tents in 2022. Yeah, so funnily enough, I want to start using these a little bit more. So um, there may be some other projects coming up with the ink tents early next year. So hopefully that may help. So I'm just being nice and careful. I don't want to sort of contaminate the um, sort of layers on these until we've got some that's dried up. So I'm just going to work my way around the outer ones first. What is that you're doing on the flower? I'm activating Derwent Ink Tents. So you're just going in nice and steady. So you don't have to worry if you don't get it all the way to the edges. I mean, some people use um, two, one, two, maybe even three layers of these Ink Tents pencils. Um, I used to use two layers, but I do find that even the books with the best quality paper will sort of go quite wrinkly. Um, I prefer to put a base layer down and then use ordinary pencils over the top just purely because it it sort of protects the integrity of the paper a little bit better. Let's have a look. How wants to conquer her fear. Yeah, I heard something, um, Julie, on the news. I don't know. Um, I can't even remember what day I heard it, but they were saying that the AstraZeneca and the Moderna are one in the same thing. It's just they're made by different pharmaceutical companies and that's why they've got slightly different names. I don't know whether that's true or not. I can't even remember where I heard it or read it. Because um, I think the clinic that I'm going to is using, well, my, my friends from work who've already had theirs, they're all being given the Moderna one. So it um, remains to be seen. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Right, let me just make sure I get this in the middle. So what I'm doing is just rolling the tip gently to get it to a nice fine point. Just because these are little weeny areas. So we've got three different reds and sort of three and a bit different reds going down into one here. So you can move the pigment with these around as much as you like while they're wet. Once they've dried, it dries where it lands. Yes, this is um, Joanna's Christmas book, Dominique, that I'm in at the moment. So you can do what you like with it once you've activated them, but when they dry, you're stuck with it. So just keep an eye on where the pigment's going. Is it looking as you want it to? Is there a little bit too much pigment there? And you can just pick it up with the end of the brush, like you just saw me do there. Just dab it away on the end of your towel. Hiya, Katrina. Katrina. 
yeah I'm, I'm going to sort of dot about a bit on this page so I can show you the uh, the pencil layer going over the top as well yeah, it's just got the yeah. A couple of other people have got them. There's Angela just popping in. I'm sure it was you, Angela, wasn't it, that tagged me in a few days ago? You've got the gravy paints as well. There may be some of those gravy paints on this page. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing yet. I'm just going to pick up some of this excess pigment on the end. But yeah, I was going to sort of um, do bits of this with my um, polychromos, but Tennis Elbow is playing up a little bit. So the castle are a lot softer, but not as soft as Prisma. And that's why I'm using them with these. So I'm going just around the edges here and then pushing the pigment in to the middle because that's the darkest area. And I'm just going to drag some of that dark pigment up the middle of the petal. And then when that dries, I will use that as a guide for the shading on the top. So again, I'm just going to activate around the edges here mush it into the middle. I'm really liking these together, they're really yummy. So with your um, ink tense combinations, what I did last night was I just spent um, half an hour or so in a scrapbook playing around with the, the different reds, um, the deeper ones, the lighter ones, just to find some combinations that I like the look of for these flowers. Um, made a note of it and that's what I'm running with today. We go that's looking rather delicious but yeah I think there will be some of the gravy paints on here can't leave them alone at the moment I think those of you that listened to my interview with Emily we were chatting a bit about that on Thursday night the watercolor side of things I've actually got some proper paints as well that I've started to use um, a lady called Emily Lefave I think that's how you pronounce her name um, she has a YouTube channel and um, she does some really good watercolour stuff and makes it look very, very simple. So I've been following a few of her videos over the last couple of weeks, having quite a good time. Just something a little bit different. There we go, just push some of that pigment up. So I've got a little bit of paper buckling. It's, um, it's nothing too offensive, nothing I'm particularly worried about. But the um, I, I have noticed, um, I don't know whether it's just in UK editions, but that the paper in the Christmas book doesn't take as well to wet mediums as some of the other ones do. So I definitely won't be doing multiple layers of ink tents in here because I'm just going to end up with a completely wonky page, which is not the look we're going for. Just missed a wee bit at the edge there. So I'm just pushing this down into dark pigment and then just use the brush just to lift a bit of that up the midline just maybe not quite as much as that just lift that up and take it away and last one and then what I'm going to do is I'll activate the leaves that I've done and then I'll show you the colours that I've put down once the edges here have dried on this one that shouldn't take too many minutes there we go Ooh, I might have a look at that shell. That sounds good. Right, let's get these leaves activated up here. So just um, while we're letting this all dry down here. So again, I've graduated from dark to light and dark to light on these. So I'm going to work from the outside edge in. And then just make sure that there's no red left on the brush and there isn't. It's all gone away. So we just work this backwards. So now I've got more of this um, really, really light one at this side. So we'll just uh, go all around this area. And just being nice and careful around the edges because I don't really want to um, bleed one into the other. So little circles with the brush. Just have a little look how it's looking. And when you get little areas of dark pigment that aren't really doing much they're just sitting there on the surface you can just use your water brush to lift them up I'm going to go nice and carefully against here because we don't want the red activating and running into the leaf which is why I'm kind of doing this uh, in little stages so the same with this one and any areas where I haven't gone right to the edge just because I don't want things to bleed together I'll correct that with ordinary pencils 
So you just go into this again, into the tip of this one, into the lighter areas. Some little circles will blend those colours together really, really nicely. So just work it backwards and forwards. Give the brush a little bit of a wipe. We'll go into this bit as well and then just blend that in together. And these are a really, really nice um, medium to use ink tents. Really versatile, um, multiple layers, single layers, pencil over the top, pastels over the top. So if you can get past your worries about using them and just give them a go, you get some really nice effects with them. So just need a wee bit more water in the brush there. We've just not quite got as much flow as I need. Let's just dab it slightly because I don't want it puddling. There we go, that's better. And again, we just use the tip of the brush just to push this up into these little corners. And there where it's just gathered, just lift it away on the brush and then that will dry. So I'm just gonna check if these edgy bits here are dry enough for me to do the leaves down here now. Feel okay. Yeah, we're good. Okie doke, where's my greens? So I want. Just bear with me one second, guys. That one. That one. That one. And that one. Just going to get my reds out of the way. Oops, a daisy, sorry about that. Stay. Right, green. Let's work on this one because this feels dry to me. So, I'm going to go on again from darkest to lightest. So, iron green is the first one. Sentient open stock. Oh, lovely, Alexandra. It's a nice thing to spend your birthday money on. So it's important to make sure the edges here are nice and dry because of course if they're not and we touch them with a water soluble pencil you're going to have a heck of a mess down here. So just make sure it's nice and dry. And I'm just going to take the tiniest little bit of this into the edges. Again where there would be some shadowy areas. And you don't need a lot of this. A little bit of this goes an awful long way. I think we had the tiniest little area of wet there, which is why it's a bit heavier, but it doesn't matter. And then we're going to go into some beach green. So beach green is the next one. And again, we're just layering them over like we did with the red. So we overblend slightly into the iron green have a little lighter edge in there. So take this darker colour sort of into the middle. So it's better from it can be a bit of both Lisa to be honest. It depends on the um on the results that you're trying to get with Castle. Um I will be using them from dark to light again as I have been doing with the ink tents for this one. And then we're going to go into some felt green. So felt green again. So I'm going to leave this edge slightly darker. So I'll take this one all the way to the end there. And just over blend a little bit again. And then we'll start the lighter edge coming at the top here. So I'm going to take this pretty much all the way to the edge again. And what I might do is do these couple as well because oh, we're going to need to wait another few minutes for that to dry out properly. But yeah, they only come in a, in a set of 72. When, when I say only, I mean you get a good colour range but it's not the biggest um, pencil set that I've ever had 72 colours but there is them sort of more than adequate for you to do to do different projects with so the lightest one on this one is the spring green 
And just bear in mind, always swatch these as well because this colour on the tip of the pencil doesn't resemble what comes out on the page down here. They're not colour accurate at all. This isn't a range where you can look at the pencil and think, oh, I'm going to use that one because the nibs of the pencil and the tips, they, they don't look anything like they do once you've activated them with water. So if you, have, if you do have these and you haven't swatched them, it is worth your time doing that. I don't have the leaf greens. A quick reminder to Santa. Lovely. <laughs> Santa on speed dial. I need more ink tense colours. Love you. I love you thinking there. That's fun. <laughs> so same again with this one. I'm just going to put a little dusting of this into these corners. I don't want too much of... Uh, in fact, I'm not going to put any into those corners there. I'm going to go straight into the beach green because they're not as big, so we don't want them to be quite as dark as that. So I'm going to leave a nice light edge on there just to give some contrast between the dark and the light. So just blend a bit of this out. And the same on this one. So I've got such a small area, so I'm going to use the tiniest little bit of this in here just a little bit so that we've got some shadowy areas and then I'll hoof back over onto felt green but yeah these pencils um, a lot of people say they feel quite intimidated by ink tents it's just a matter of playing around with them really and especially if you if you only do one layer and you you use other pencils over the top it's pretty easy to correct anything that you don't like or doesn't look very good Rosalie, you're using the blocks. I've never tried the blocks. I've seen them. Um, yeah, I think I'd end up in a heck of a mess trying to use something like that. Definitely. You're a braver woman than I am. <laughs> so this one, we'll just nudge this into the edge of the edge of the petal and then we go straight back on with spring green. So I'm just cycling the same, the same four colours. So we want a nice contrast on the edge of here. So put quite a bit in there. And on here as well. On this little guy. And I think what I might as well do while I'm at it is just um, do this little guy as well. So I think I'm going to go straight on to... No, I do want a bit of shadow. So back onto beach green. And again, just the tiniest little bit of that to give a bit of a hint of a shadow in there. And then back into felt green. So the smaller the leaf, the less of the dark you're going to use, unless you want it particularly wanting the, the leaves to be dark, of course, which you might. Can I post the colour names? Hang on, I'll show you Gina in a second. Let me just get this last wee bit down. So back on with spring green. There we go. Right, so just for Gina. Hiya Susie. Nippy, windy Vale, Arizona. Crikey. And we have some felt green. And some beach green. And some iron green. There we go. So I'm going to get these guys out of the way again. This feels pretty dry. Um, this one is still a little on the uh, damp side. So what I might do is I'll activate this flower as well. Then we'll activate the leaf and rotate round that way. So just check that this has got no green on the end and that it's still moist enough. So if you're ever in doubt, check it on your skin. Because if you get loads and loads of bubbles of water like that, it's probably got a wee bit too much coming out of it. So better you get a wet hand than a wet patch on your book. So again, we're going to work from the middle ones all the way around. To start with these ones, so we go. Oh, look at that, not quite dry enough. It's fine, we've caught it just about right there. So, work this back. Let's 
still slightly too damp. You just go with it, it's fine. So I'll take that all the way to the edge there. So I'm just gonna give that a good a good block because it's a wee bit too wee bit too wet for what I'm trying to do. And let's just test it on there again. Yeah, you'll do. That's better. Oh, there's Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. So here we go again. Yeah, that's better. So not getting a like a blob of water appearing, which is fine, but. If you don't have control of it, it just leaves it really blotchy when it dries. So just push that all the way to the back. I've got a shield helicara, oh my god, how cool is that? So I'm just going to roll the tip again into a, a little point and just work, keep working round. it's quite dark so I may have to put some extra pencil into here we'll see how it dries anyway right I'm just gonna have a little sip of my I've got a hot cup of Ribena next to me so let me just have a sip of this mm -mm -mm. sorry for the gold pitch just um, feel myself getting dry <clears throat> not good is it doing a live with a frog in your in your throat Dear, oh dear. Right, let's carry on. Yeah, sorry for the jumping around. I was doing the trial run of this earlier on and I just thought, hmm, I'm going to end up doing a bit and then we're going to be sitting here and it literally will be watching paint dry. Because um, it does need to be um, nice and dry before you do anything over the top. So I figured I'll do this in little stages and then as each bit dries, I can move on and do something else. And I also have a backup plan on the desk as well. So I've just got a smidge of green that's ran onto the edge of that petal, but that's fine. I should be able to cover that up with the ordinary pencil over the top. There we go. Lego advent calendar. Oh my God, how do I not know about these things? Instantly need one. But fear that we've missed the boat there because it's what, two weeks yesterday, I want to say, to the big day. So this one, I'm just gonna go around the edges where we had the lightest ones and then work this in towards the middle. And then again, go back to where the, the darkest bit and just move a little bit up the center line there. The same with this one. It's got that nice scarlet pink at the very tip of the petal there. Just pull that all the way around into the middle and into the base. And then a little bit up the centre line. And any little bits like that you can just move them around with your brush. Oops. Oh, I meant to say, Carol, I don't know whether you got that... Um, thing that I sent you yesterday. I sent a few out to a few different people and I suddenly realised when I shared the link to the e-card it probably looked slightly dodgy. So if you've had a message from me and you haven't looked at it yet, it isn't anything dodgy, it's just an e-Christmas card that I was sending out. Yeah, go ahead um, Alexandra, that's fine. Go ahead and put it in. My, um, my wife will be very interested to see that in particular. We love the Avengers in this house. But yeah, any of you that got, um, and I haven't finished sending them all yet, um, but any of you that got like a, a message and on a Facebook Messenger from me with an, an internet link, um, it's just a Christmas card. It's nothing dodgy and it's not a virus. What art supply am I hoping Santa brings? I honestly don't know. Um, it's one of those situations where, you know, when you're an adult, budget allowing, if there's things that you see that you want, you kind of get them, don't you? So when it comes to this time of year and people are wanting to know what we want, it becomes very difficult because within reason, if you've seen something, you've bought it during the year. 
so I honestly don't know. Um, I know that my dad is getting me some um, cotton and watercolour brushes, but the reason I know that is because he asked me what I wanted and I sent him the link. It just kind of defeats the object, doesn't it? Can't tell you what I've, what I've got, Catherine, because she's sitting here, albeit with headphones on, but I can't tell you. Um, but yeah, I honestly don't know what art supplies. I have um, swatched the pastel tint pencils that you sent me, Carol. Thank you very much. Um, my mum has had the set that I'd already ordered myself. Um, so I have swatched them and I have started using them. But just um, mainly to play about with. So I haven't done any pages or anything with them. So thank you for those. Really nice little range of colours actually. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if there's anything I need, but then want and need is um, two very different things, as we all know. I do have my eye on the, the metallic set, but every time I look, they're sold out. So obviously everyone else um, has got their eye on them as well, or has got them. So any of you that are using them, I'm um, really interested to hear what you make of them. Because I think metallics, um, you know, trying to colour golds or silvers or, you know, bronzes or whatever is really tricky. And most of the sets you get where you've actually got a metallic pencil in, um, the idea of it's better than the reality in my experience. You know, I don't think I've ever used the um, the metallic Prisma ever. It's like the neons, they just languish. Um, so yeah, the metallics, I'm really interested in sort of hearing about how they look. I mean, if I want any, anything metallic within reason, I'm, I'm all over the old uh, gel pens, as you know. So Shell's got it and likes them. Hmm. Tell you what, um, Carol was a really good touch with those pastel tin is the fact that they send it with. Um, it came with a, like a pre. Um, what's the word? Printed swatching sheet that was literally ready to go. So no having to draw boxes or write things down. It was literally sharpen and colour. Um, so that was a really nice touch comes with a little booklet with loads of colouring hints and tips as well and it came with um, a pad of Bristol board paper, black paper and ordinary cartridge paper and I thought that was a wonderful touch so any of you that haven't had the um, Castle pencils, the new ones or, or looked at them if you go for the ones where it says special set so again thank you for that Carol because um, they were sort of more expensive um, this stuff all comes with all these extra bits and bobs. Blooming fantastic. I mean, I'm easily pleased, but a swatching sheet that's literally ready to go with no faffing around, that is just like, oh. So that was a really happy couple of hours in front of the telly, messing around with them. Julie's loving the pastel tint as well. They are really, really nice. A couple of them are quite neon -y. Um, I don't know if those of you have, who've got them, if you'd agree, but I found a couple of the colours quite neon. I don't sort of object to neon as such, but it, I don't go for neon colours, you know, massively often, really. Look at me waffling on, I'm just activating everything under the sun, and then I know it's all done. Um, it's just trying to be a wee bit careful. I have them on the wish list. I know the wish lists are so handy. Um, but as my dear wife pointed out, you have some lovely followers who send you bits and pieces from time to time. Did you not think to check your wish list before you ordered them from Castle? And I was like, mm, no, evidently not. <laughs> Whoops. So, um, yeah, my bad. But my mum's dead happy. <laughs> don't tempt you into getting them. Just get them, Carol. Don't, don't think on it. It's not a decision you want to trouble yourself with. Just go for it. Right, you're nice and dry now, aren't you? And you certainly should be. Let's start working carefully on this red flower. Right, castle. So I'm just going to separate my reds from my greens. And I'm going to have a wee sip of my Ribena as well. <laughs> Jeanette, resisting more. Resistance is futile, haven't you seen the show? <laughs> What's the pencils I like to use the most, says Lisa. It's difficult. Um, 
I will always, always default onto Prismacolor, always. So I'm just going to flash these at you so you can write them down or whatever. But I dot about, um, I'll have Prismacolor Castle, um, I've got Statler Ergo Soft, which I also like. So I just dot about really, depending on um, what I feel like using. So I'm going to go in with some magenta first of all. I'm going to work on this dark shadowy area in the middle here. Now the reason that I chose these ones as opposed to the Prismacolor is the Prismacolor are um, very soft, very smushy and they will cover and obliterate the effects of the ink tents and that's not the look I'm going for. All I'm trying to do is smooth it over a little bit, deepen the colour a little bit but I still want it to look as though it's ink tents that I've used. So with these, they're not a hard pencil and they're not a soft pencil. They sit very nicely in between Polychromos, which are very, very hard, and Prisma, which are as soft as butter. So I'm not pressing very hard at all here. Very, very lightly. So I just want to smooth things over. I don't want to lose all this nice colour that I've already added underneath. In any little areas where you haven't quite got the paintbrush into, you can use these pencils just to correct all of that. So I'm just trying to see what my next darkest one is here. God, this is meant to be a good table lamp. I think it's that one. So vermilion, even if it's not that one, it don't matter. I was just about to try and colour with it that way round. Did you see that? I wouldn't have got very far, would I? <laughs> dear, oh dear. So again, we smooth over. But yeah, that's my rationale behind why I'm using this particular brand. Because as you can see, it just smooths over, but it doesn't obliterate everything. I just want enough out of them to get rid of a few of these imperfections. So, you know, you, you could go on and do a second layer of ink tents if you wanted to. I won't do that though, particularly in this book, because I do find that the Christmas book, for whatever reason, doesn't really cope too well with wet media. So I'm quite happy with how sort of gently wonky this page is at the moment. Don't really want it going any more wonky than it already is though. So while I've got this vermilion, because this is my darkest colour, I'm just going to go up the midline of as well, deepen the very the very base of these petals. And up the midline again. But yeah, honestly, um asking me if you should or shouldn't have art supplies, I'll always default to yes you should have it. Um what can I say? One thing that I wish um, with these castle arts is I wish that the regular colouring pencils were the whole of the barrel was, you know, coloured rather than just the tip. Because if you put them the wrong way round in your tin or your pencil case, there can be a bit of a devil to try and um, figure out which one you're looking at. So do you wish that the barrels were all coloured like the pastel tin ones are? Because that's a lot, lot easier. Right, next is going to be cadmium red. So on with cadmium red now. So that one is going to go to just the very, very tip of the outer edge petals. Just sits really nicely over that scarlet pink. Just tidies it up, doesn't change the colour at all. So all I've done is um, used eye to go up the um, Castle Arts swatching chart that I've got, just to find something that looks nice and similar to those Derwent Ink Tense pencils that I've already used. And I'm just going to carry on smoothing over. Barely any pressure there as you can see. I mean if this was Prisma I would have obliterated everything underneath because they're so smushy. But these castles they just sit nicely over the top, just smooth out a few of the wrinkles. 
correct any little areas where you've, you've gone a bit off track. And the lightest one is a little bit of scarlet red. Are there any pencils I wouldn't use that are over ink tents? Not really, no, not really. Um, I've put, I'm trying to think what I haven't used over them. I've not really tried polychromize over the top. Um, I've used my Prismas over the top. Never tried my Ergo Softs, but I've not had them very long. In fact, I think the, li the last live video I did with you guys, um, Amazon was trying to ram them through the let box. That was fun. Um, but no, anything really. These are just nice because they they just sit over. They don't obliterate what you've already done, which I quite like. I'm just going to tidy that end up as well. So in the middle here, just to darken the shadows, I've got a little bit of sepia. It's quite a reddy brown, really. Um, nice reddy brown colour. I'm just going to go over in here. Just to darken that up a little bit just gives it a bit more depth there we go maybe in between those guys as well and what I might actually do is just nudge a bit of it into any areas where we've got a bit of an overlap and again we don't press hard we only need a tiny little bit there we go Rosalind's using polys, that's good. Good to know that it's working well. I did get them out early on, but my tennis elbow is troubling me a little bit and they're just a bit too hard for me to, uh, to use. So we did the top leaves first. So I'm gonna go to these guys. so distracted with chatting with you all I forget to sometimes show you the colours so Viridian um, Permanent Green Leaf Green Terra Verde Deep and Prussian Green I'm going to go with the Viridian first oh Alexandra you're in Twilight Garden at the moment I am probably going to be pulling out um, Worlds of Wonder again I think this one may be the last Christmassy page that I do. Um, I'm in the middle of a Chris Cheng at the moment in, um, oh, flipping heck, I can never pronounce it. One of you guys put, um, said what it was the last time I did a live, the one with the two owls and it's autumn colours. Uh, Rhapsody in the forest, is it? Something like that anyway. So I've set myself a bit of a, a task of actually getting that finished because I've started it and I've started the first owl and then I've just piked out so I'm gonna probably go back to that it's no good piking out is it you need to you need to finish you've got no staying power right Prussian green it may well um help Jeanette yeah um I find that watercolour bases um ink tents base anything like that you will get a really nice rich colour layering pencils over the top so if you've got a sketchbook or something play around with what you've got and um, with whatever reds you've got over the top and just see what looks you know see how it looks whether you're happy like I said that's all I did last night I've got the page next to me um, so I was watching Strictly last night and playing around with different ink tents colour combos for today until I found ones that I was happy with. Right, I'm just going to nudge this in under here because I made a nice light edge on the side of that leaf and I just want it to be a decent amount of contrast. And then on to permanent green. Ooh, Strictly wasn't it good? Yes, it was. Blooming fantastic. Think the neighbours might have heard us cheering last night. Oh, roses and geos and um, tango. Oh, 
just wonderful. So um, yeah, really good. Looking forward to the results show tonight very much. So I want to smooth this out quite a bit more than I did with the red flower. So I'm pressing a little bit harder with the green than I was with the reds. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? If I show you a comparison between the two, that Susie's just saying. So we've got just um, ink tents on its own as opposed to where I've just neatened things up with the castle. So um, less faffing with the ink tents, but it really smooths things over. You can see the differences, can't you? And you? Again, you'll see the differences between these sets of leaves as well. You can see the before, that was the trial I did this afternoon. Um, but yeah, it really does, um, it really does smooth things out nicely. And these are, in, Castle is a nice brand to use over these. It's a nice brand to use over watercolours as well. They're not, not too hard, not too soft really softly sort of blendable but yeah it, it, it just smooths it all out and another layer of the ink tents really would be ideal but I've found out the hard way that it just it does sort of warp the page leaf green uh, do you know asking what ty was oh I know these internet abbreviations and stuff that um that go up and some of them I see and I'm like, what? So I'm right with you there. Right, let's just nudge this in for these edges. So what I'll probably do is reuse some of these greens and some of the holly leaves as well. I'll have another play around with those. And um, so, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how the land lies. If I feel okay when I wake up next Sunday, I may well announce that I'll be, like, put a live up. Um, you know, with just a few hours notice, but I need to wait and see how I feel after this injection. I don't want to sort of put something up and then let you guys down at the last minute. I hate doing that. So terra verde deep. This one's a very, very dark green. And like the sepia on the red, we just use this to darken in the very darkest bit of shadows. Nice and gentle so we don't have big, ugly, dark patches everywhere. in these edge bits as well beautiful that's what we do in five to five so I'm just gonna let that settle that finish drying let's let's whip out a uh, let's whip out a brush pen shall we so some of you have um, been buying these um saws <laughs> I've been showing them to you. So Pentel Dual Metallic Brush Pens. Same as the gel pens, but with a nice brush. Don't shake them with the lid off, unless you want a really interesting sort of splatter type effect on the work that you're doing. So I'm just gonna grab my pad. So I just want to make sure that we've got... So I haven't used this um, for probably three or four weeks and I've just popped a little bit and look how nice and super sparkly it is. It hasn't dried up at all. So, in fact, let's get the old goggles on, which I do have next to me for once. Because I wobble all over the place when I'm using these in between lines. So I'm going to do the top of the... See, look at that. I've wobbled anyway. Never mind. I'm going to use this on the top. Um, we were saying I, I don't like um, trying to colour metallics with, with my pencils. I will do if I have to, but why, why would I do that when I've got something nice and sparkly? Video is frozen on Lisa's end. Looks okay, I haven't got a black screen of death anywhere at this end, so maybe just refresh. Um, I'll say, like I did the last time, um, we're approaching the hour. I'll probably be with you until about 5.15 my time, depending on how it goes. Um, if the algorithm chucks me off, I'm not going to restart it though tonight, guys. It's only going to be sort of 60, 75 minutes worth of live this evening. It's a lot, lot easier. 
um, for me with um, video editing, I can literally just upload this all in one go. So where I've wobbled around slightly, I'll probably just correct it with a black fine liner. I know this is easy, I don't have those. You don't have Pentel brush pens in your pencil case. You need them, they're so wonderful. They are more pricey than the gel pen version and the gel pen version looks exactly the same on paper. So depending on price point and availability and things, you'll get the same effects with the gel pen version. The, the brush pen, however, although the price point is higher, you get um, more for your buck. Um, there's a lot more ink in here than there is in the pens. And of course you can get into real tiny little nooks and crannies and you can wobble all over the place as well around those nooks and crannies, um, which I'm demonstrating for you pretty well uh, with my new glasses on. Dear, oh dear. But yeah, they are deliciously wonderful to use. Um, Pentel themselves, if you go direct to them, only ships to the UK, but I know Amazon US has them. Um, Amazon UK also has them. Um, Colt pens, always have to say that word really carefully, Ooh. also has them and they were on offer with um, with them recently. So lots of different, different places have them. Santa. <laughs> but um, yeah, these are, are a firm favourite. I really, really like them. So what you do is, um, a bit like a normal brush pen that you're painting with um, where you have water in it, you'll feel when these need a bit of a boost. So all that you do is, and don't do this above your colouring book, is you just depress that ever so slightly. Now we don't do it on your work because you may get a bubble like I've just got, which is fine. You just swoosh it around on a spare bit of paper. And then we're ready to go again. But yeah, that's flowing much better. Oh God, this wobbled again. But yeah, don't do it above your work. Because the more that you go down, you do end up getting, um, getting little bubbles of, of paint coming through, which will blob everywhere. Are you doing coffee? Oh, lovely. Catherine just off to do a coffee run. Yeah, these brushes are really, really nice for getting into all these little nooks and crannies. And for wibbling around and outside of these lines as well. It's not too bad. Let's just merge this in. Right, so I'm just going to put my hand up here because this is where the the ink tents in the water has just made the page a wee bit crinkly. Yeah, she's just been watching some some documentary on um, Netflix about some guys scaling all of the um, eight biggest mountains in the world or something. Give me vertigo just looking at it. Terrible. She's actually in the kitchen now so I can't say hello to her. I really want to tell you what I've got for Christmas, but I can't because she's got ears like a fruit bat. <laughs> um, I don't prefer them, Sandra. I think they sit nicely um, as a companion to ordinary gel pens. Um, if you've got lots of little fiddly areas and things, they just do a slightly different job really for me. So budget allowing, um, I would have both of these. Um, what I like about these in particular is the fineness of the tip because the the gel pens with um, Pentel, the, the nibs are quite chunky, which is okay, but when you're in, you're sort of trying to do little details and stuff, it's a bit troublesome. Whereas, <coughs> excuse me, like this, you can get into some of these little areas a bit better. I mean, the the tip is very fine. It's It's more sort of user error which is why I'm wobbling around it's nothing to do with the brush pen pretty much got my my head under the phone so if you end up seeing the, seeing the top of my head I'm really sorry these little fiddly bits um 
a really difficult yeah she could be sneaky and watch the playback she did we were talking yesterday actually about um blending and things because she colors as well and she said to me um oh you know do i need you know this kind of pencil or this kind of pencil because i'm not really a blender i said well you know you, you could be um a blender if you wanted to be and she said i might surprise you and do one for my tutorials and my jaw hit the floor like what so in all the time I've been doing these, these tutorials, she's never watched one. And in fact, I think my mum's only attempted to actually do one of them um, as well. So um, yeah, it'd be just my luck. She'd have this um, lightning bolt of needing to do a, you know, a bauble with flowers on. And I'd be like, oh yeah, I've got a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and she'd be watching it. But what I'll do is um, I'll show it to you. Once she's obviously received it, I'll show it to you. We'll just say that her eyes popped when she saw the size of the Amazon box that it was delivered in. As did I, actually. It's like a flipping suitcase. It's massive. But she's in the middle of another one of her models at the moment. HMS Snowberry. Which is looking rather spectacular. So there we go super sparkly and again you do um in the gel pen range if i can find it where are you gold i know you're in here there we go that's the gel pen version um pentel hybrid dual metallic so um just to show you for comparison so that that splodge there is um the paint pen if i do the gel pen I do have to give them a bit of encouragement by giving them a bit of a tap. I kind of show them next to each other. So paint pen, gel pen. It's not really a massive amount of difference. It's just um, they're a bit more versatile. Oh, is that you off, Palmy? Take care. So the other one that I'm going to do, um, probably before I leave you guys, I think I do want that to be blue. So let's grab another one of these as well. So this is um, a blue and green version. So again, I'm just going to test this on the edge of my pad. Beautiful. And what we'll do is we'll start down here. says holding her breath while I do the uh, the fiddly bit. I think there will be some of that uh, metallic paint coming on here somewhere. Just think maybe some of the holly leaves need to be need to be metallic. That's just my thinking on it at the moment. So I'm gonna try my best to keep my hand out of the bits that are all wet still. I really, really like these. I'm thinking I might do a blue background behind these um, flowers. That's what I'm thinking. So this will probably force me to make it blue, otherwise nothing else is going to match. But rather than colouring this ribbon, I want it to be all sparkly and beautiful. I could sort of go for like realism and try and colour it with all, you know, dark and light bits and fabric and all the rest of it but let's just make it pretty it's only going to be with you until i finish this bow as soon as i finish this i'm going to be loving you and leaving you so um like i said earlier on i will possibly if i'm going to be about on sunday next week it will be at the last minute um without any notice at all purely because i don't know how i'm going to be with this vaccine so just keep an eye um if I'm like the walking dead, nobody needs to see that, so <laughs> I won't be going live. Well, you obviously wouldn't be seeing it, you'd be hearing it, but you know what I mean. Hoping it's going to be fine. It's just every, every person I've come into contact with at work or family, they've all been like, oh, 
I wasn't half poorly after having that booster shot. I'm thinking, oh, give me a break, not again. So um, we'll see. We'll see. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Keep hydrated, Jerry. Yeah, definitely will do. Definitely. But I will be um, starting up on Instagram again. So um, I haven't got my jab until Saturday. So unless um, Catherine is really poorly after hers, because hers is Wednesday. I may well pop on to Instagram on Thursday and um, say hello to you guys. Maybe do a bit more of this one. So, um, yeah. But again, I won't necessarily be doing the same routine every week. I do need to make sure that I'm getting enough breaks and stuff. So I'll always announce it on my socials so you guys will know. Oh, um, bless you, Bev. And I'm going to be finishing um, once I've painted this. I'm so sorry. Hopefully you'll be able to watch the replay on on YouTube, which I will, I will put it up in a little while. Oh, I do love these pens so much. But yeah, I'll let you guys know anyway. I can't believe um, two weeks today is uh, Boxing Day. Where on earth did November and December go? So what I might do is work. I'm just trying to think where my hand's going to be. Let's, yeah, let's work down this bit next. I'm doing well. I've managed to keep my hand out of the way the whole way round. So far. So the um, other uh, poinsettia page that I put up a few days ago I actually added some lettering to that. Um, I did Merry Christmas Mum on it and that has gone to my my mum instead of a Christmas card this year. Which, because um, these, I like the fact that you can actually detach them from the book, but because they're so seasonal, the few that I have done, um, I've been wanting to make them into sort of like Christmas card equivalents for people. Right, let's see if I can get this into the tip here. without wobbling too much. Yeah, that went too bad, was it? Get this to meet up. Yeah, I think that was a good decision. That looks good. But the background for this now is definitely going to have to be blue or it's going to look really, really weird. So let's into this bit because the gold should be reasonably dry by now I'm hoping <gasps> yes um, Carol so um, most it's funny most things will operate on most of our bank holidays but there's two or three in the year where everything is shut down and that is one of them nine working days and then I have a really lovely long break from work so um, I will definitely make sure that I do some lives over the, the festive period so I'll have lots of time on my hands to be nice and creative but um, I'm going to give myself a real talking to and get that quiz chain that I'm in the middle of finished my poor owl is half dressed because I'm halfway through it. Um, no, I'm not storing them tip down, Shell. Um, the lady at Pentel that I spoke to um, advised me to make sure that you store them um, horizontally. Don't store them tip down or tip up. Um, she didn't. She didn't elaborate on uh, on why. But yeah, I keep them. I've got like a, a tray thing. Oh, nuts, it just wobbled into the mistletoe there. I've got a tray th um, thing just next to me in my cupboard and they all lay nice and flat in there. And again, those of you that are thinking of getting them or if you have them, don't shake them with the lid off or it will be an apocalypse of glitter all over the page. And for once, I haven't found that out the hard way. My contact at Pentel told me when she sent me these pens. 
she sent me a lovely message for goodness sake don't shake them over any of your wonderful artwork because it's going to make a hell of a mess I may actually try it just one day just for the hell of it and see what it does because I think it would be a nice a nice little sort of different sort of a background I mean a watercolour that's an actual technique isn't it getting watercolour on a brush and sort of tapping it and having it sort of drip everywhere all over the page so maybe we could start a new trend with the glitter pens oh thank you just one sec just let me do this it's Catherine with my coffee oh thank you I can stick it on the lamp base did that just drip on me? No. <laughs> Ew. Thank you. They all said hello and I couldn't say hello to you because you bogged off. Oh, hello. <laughs> but yeah, store them like this. Keep, keep them sideways. Right, let me... I'm going to try and unzoom and see if we have an absolute nightmare of a situation. There we go. Oh, okay, well, she's just disappeared again. <laughs> I'll tell her you said hi. So let me just show you. I'm I, I'll, get, I'll send you a message, um, Gail, what her Christmas present is, because I've got to share it with somebody. It's so fantastic. I hope she likes it. That'd be a letdown, wouldn't it? So you can hopefully see the difference between the ones where we've actually added pencil so at the moment we've got one flower and one set of leaves that have had no pencil over the top and we've got this one which has been sorted um this flower that's been sorted and those leaves so it just smooths it but not enough so that it looks like you never use them because there's just no point of using ink tents if you're going to obliterate um any trace of them really so just um those of you that have not long popped in i'll just show you the colors again real quickly in the ink tents range and then i'm not going to tempt fate any further than i already have done and i'm going to disappear because we've just hit the 75 minutes anyway so let me just run you through these colors real quick um, just those of you that have only just popped in. So we have felt green. We have beach green. God, take your glasses off, Suzanne. It's making my um, my iPad and my phone look humongously big. <laughs> it's not good. We have fern. Spring green. I didn't use that one, so I'm gonna put that one away. That's for the holly leaves. In fact, the um, the fern I haven't used that one yet either. So put that to the side for the time being. So iron green as well. I haven't used that one yet. We have some scarlet pink. Some chili red. and some Shiraz and Hot Red. Beautiful. So yeah, I'm gonna love you guys and leave you guys. So like I say, keep an eye. Um, if I'm gonna be about on Sunday next week, it's gonna be a very last minute thing, depending on whether I'm actually still feeling human after having my booster shot. So um, sort of stay tuned. It may be a last minute thing, potentially. I don't wanna stick some up and then sort of cry off and let you down, I hate doing that. I will be about probably on Instagram next week, um, maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday, but again, I'll announce that on my stories um, and I'll probably do a little bit more work on this in the meantime. And then, you know, bits of it will be done, but I'll do equivalent bits so you can see how I've done it for those of you wanting to follow along. But ideally, I want to try and um, wrap this one up before Christmas because otherwise it just becomes pointless, doesn't it, really? But it's really good to see you all again. Thanks for sort of jumping in. Um, yeah, sorry about the blip at the beginning of the video. What a nightmare. <laughs> I will get this uploaded onto YouTube as well anyway. Um, and we will speak again before Christmas. Those of you that can't join the live stream between now and Christmas, do have a wonderful Christmas. Stay safe. Um, yeah, see you all soon. So I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to go now. Catherine started for dinner. My belly's growling. So um, yeah, love you and leave you. Take care, you guys. See you soon. Bye.